Look at those big, beautiful rainbows. That's what trolling flies can do. You think trolling flies don't work? Well, think again. You need to grab a set of my trolling flies, get out on the water, and get ready to go big. Ah, <laughs> yes. Fish on the line. Fish on the line. Oh, yeah. On the deep line. Fish on the line. And I got my other rod in, so that's good. Ooh, this is a, this is a horse. This is a nice fish. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, I'm gaining nothing on this fish. I am gaining nothing. Like Come on, baby. Into the last color of lead now. He hit like a ton of bricks. We'll see if he's as big as he feels. <laughs> oh, it's a trout. It's a trout. For sure. This is right where I caught that, well, where I hooked and lost that big one. I'm right in the same spot, so hopefully it's his, hopefully it's his twin, twin sister. We'll see. Just real gentle here, pedaling kind of into a, quartering into a wind and pedaling to keep the fish under control. Oh man, head shaking there. Oh, he's pulling drag. Woo, buddy. Oh boy. That's what you come to Lake Davis for, guys. Yeah. Still haven't seen him. He's right there, though. Get a flash once in a while. Oh, he's a nice fish. Come to daddy. Oh, this is a nice heavy holdover. Come here. Come on, baby. Come on, you're tired. Come on, you're going in the smoker. Come here. Come on, I got you. <laughs> oh, that's three pounds. That's every ounce of three. That's a nice fish. Oh, buddy. That's a stud right there. That is an awesome fish. That's the fish of the day. Um, that fish is probably, probably real close to three pounds. He's only about 17 inches, but he is husky. He is hefty, and what a fight. What an incredible fish. That's what you come to Lake Davis for. He couldn't lay off that orange fly. You retrieve that fly here. He could, he could not lay off that fly. And that was down, I don't know, probably close to 20 feet, 17, 18 feet, something like that. Um, I was kind of quartering into the wind, 1.6 miles an hour. And uh, that guy just came along and he hit like a ton. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here, coming back at you with some more lead core talk. Today, I got a viewer question from a fella named Greg down in Solano County, and he asked me, when do you know it's time to change your lead core line? And uh, that's a good question. That's a question I get quite a bit. Um, lead core is a little bit you know, expensive, but the way that we do it here using our hybrid rigs, we only use three colors of lead core at a time Typically, you get 10 colors of lead core on a spool, so when you buy a spool, you get enough lead core line to spool up three times. It can also be difficult to get. It was very hard to get during the pandemic. These days, the supply chain is, is starting to percolate again, but it can still be kind of, kind of challenging to find lead core line at times. So, when do you change lead core line? When do you need to change lead core line? That's a very good question. Now. If you're using the cheaper types of lead core, the colors tend to fade. When they're exposed to the water, they're exposed to the sun, they tend to fade. But that's not a real good reason to change your lead core. If you've been fishing with the line enough to, to get it to fade, you've got a pretty good idea where those color transitions are. Okay, I've had my, my, my colors get very dim, very weak, but I could always tell where it transitioned, you know, from purple to brown or from red to yellow or stuff like that. So I don't typically change mine just because the color fades. If you get twist in your lead core, it'll get, get a bunch of bumps on it. Um, still, I'll keep fishing with it for a while. It's kind of annoying going through the guides of the rod, but it's still very functional, it works fine. So I'll typically, if I get it twisted, I'll, I'll fish with it until it really starts to get on my nerves and then I'll change it. But I'm gonna show you something here. If this happens, I like to change it right away. This is a rod I was using up at, uh, at Lake Davis the other day and I noticed, look right there, and this I noticed this in a couple spots on the line, but look right there, see that? 
the lead core inside of the sheath has broken and I actually have a little piece of little splinter of lead core, the lead wire, right there kind of sticking out like a whisker. I've got that one right there and whoa, I've got another one of those right, where is it? Right there, see that right there? Okay, that isn't compromising the strength of the line because lead core gets its strength from the sheath, not from the lead wire inside. But uh, nevertheless, I just don't like that. It, it, it's wonky going through the guides. When I was at Davis, that's a weedy lake, I was picking up strands of grass on those little whiskers. I was reeling them when I was fighting fish. I was reeling them back into the reel. Um, I, I just didn't, didn't like it at all. Now, I suppose if you really wanted to be thrifty, you could maybe maybe trim that, that little whisker of lead core away and maybe snap it off like that and then kind of work it back in there. But you know what's gonna happen. It's gonna see there, it's gonna come right back out of there. So if you have lead core line that's broken or that is showing through the sheath, I, I, I think that's the time to change the line. Err on the side of, of safety um, because while I'm 99% I'm sure that hasn't compromised the strength of that sheath, do I really want to bet a 10 pound rainbow on that line with pieces of lead core sticking out like porcupine quills? I don't think so. So in short, if I've got some bumps on the line from twist, I'll eventually change the line out. If it's just faded, no, I'm not gonna change it out until I get something more serious than fade. But if I'm seeing pieces of the lead core protruding through that sheath, I'm ripping that off and changing it out. And uh, that's on the menu for this weekend because I'm planning to get back up to Lake Davis. And I love this rig. I've been running this Okuma cold water on it, but uh, totally lost confidence in it when I noticed those, those splinters of lead core out there. And I probably wouldn't have noticed it if I didn't reel in and I was getting weeds on there and I was like, weed does, doesn't usually stick to lead core. And then I did a little investigation and I found out that I actually have three or four spots on here where the lead wire has busted through the sheath. So not a big fan of that. Anyway, hope that answers your question down there in Solano County, Greg. I'm jumping for now. I'll be back on here real soon talking about fishing tactics, tackle, whatever strikes my fancy. If you like this kind of content, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you're looking for fishing tackle, be it a yellow lead core rod, some of my trigger spoons, some of my signature series trolling flies, whatever, check out our store at fishhuntshoot.com and uh, we will send you out on the water with what you need to catch fish probably going to go big. My lures are great. My flies are deadly. Um, it's good stuff. I get reports almost every day of guys out in the field using our gear and having really good results. Anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg. Thanks for all the support guys and I will see you real soon right here on YouTube.